up your MPT, data for today's date. We're going to do the quiz review for lessons 3, 4 through 3, 6. We're going to start out with y varies directly to x. If y is 5 when x is 20, find y when x is 44. So because we have varies directly, we know that we are looking for an ordered pair, and we're looking for y is equal to kx. And we're going to need to solve for k. The order pair that they give us is 25. So we're going to go ahead and use that ordered pair. 25 and y is equal to kx. The 5 is going to go in for the y. The 20 is going to go in for the x. So 5 is equal to k times 20. 20x is equal to 5 using the symmetrical and commutative property of multiplication. Divide by 20, divide by 20, and we're going to have k is equal to 1 fourth. So my direct variation equation is going to be y is equal to 1 fourth x. Now I'm missing a coordinate. I'm given 44, but I have to find y. So I'm going to use my direct variation equation because I don't have two coordinates of an ordered pair. So y is equal to 1 fourth x. y is equal to 1 fourth times 44. So y is equal to 11. So the missing coordinate is 11, and the direct variation equation is y is equal to 1 fourth x. Now we have Lori's wages vary directly as time, as time she works. If her $200, if her wages for 8 hours are $200, what are her wages for 42 hours? So we have money and hours. Y is equal to KX. And we have, oop, I have that a little bit backwards there. It is hours and money. All right, so what we know is our ordered pair, and we're finding K. So our ordered pair is going to be 8 hours for $200. So y is equal to kx. 200 is equal to k times 8. 8k using symmetrical and CPM is equal to 200. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. K is equal to 25. Now we have another ordered pair. We have 42 hours, but we're not sure how much money that's going to be. So we're going to use our direct variation equation, which we need to generate over here, which is going to be Y is equal to 25X. So we're going to do y is equal to 25x. We're going to put our 42 in here. And now we're going to multiply 25 times 42. And we get 1,050. So that is going to be our y. So we have our y, 1,050 and we have our direct variation equation of y is equal to 25x. Now we need to determine whether this sequence is an arithmetic sequence. So the first thing we're going to look at is our common difference. So from 7 to 2 is negative 5. From 2 to negative 3 is negative 5 negative 3 to negative 8 is negative 5. So our common difference is negative 5. And just for practice, um, our first term, our a sub 1, is 7. 
but because we have a common difference of negative 5, then yes, it is an arithmetic sequence. Find the next three terms. So the easiest way to do that, since they're going to be the next three consecutive terms, we're going to just find our common difference. So this is going to be negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. So obviously our common difference is negative 4. So our next three terms are going to be negative 14, negative 18, and negative 22. Now we're going to use our formula to find our equation for the nth term, and then we're going to find the twelfth term. So to start out, we have our formula a n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we're going to have a n is equal to negative 2 is our first term, plus n minus 1, and our common difference is 4 a sub n is equal to negative 2 plus, we're going to flip this around so that we can get ready for distributive, and we're going to distribute a n is equal to negative 2 plus 4 n plus negative 4. We're going to combine our like terms, so a n is equal to 4 n minus 6. So that is our equation for the nth term. Now if we want to find the twelfth term, we're going to do a sub 12 is equal to 4 times 12 minus 6. So the twelfth term is equal to 48 minus 6. So the twelfth term is going to equal 42. Find the function and is it proportional or not? So to find the function, we're going to take two ordered pairs, 0, 4, 1, 8, and we're going to find y is equal to mx plus b, m equals b equals. For the m, we're going to do m is equal to y2, minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to do m is equal to 8 minus 4 over 1 minus 0. Adeline changed the sign. Adeline changed the sign. So we're going to have 4 over 1 is our slope. We also notice that we see our y-intercept 0, 4. So our function is going to be f of x is equal to 4x plus 4. Remember that our equation of the line was y is equal to 4x plus 4. So to make it a function, we just replace the y with the f of x. This is not proportional because it does not go through the origin. It goes through 0, 4. Alright, we're going to take our two ordered pairs. 1, 3, 2, 6. y is equal to mx plus b. m equals b equals. So for our slope, it's going to be m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. m equals 6 minus 3 over 2 minus 1. Adeline changed the sign. Adeline changed the sign, so we're going to have 3 over 1. So our slope is 3 over 1. Notice that this line goes through the origin, so our y-intercept is 0, and b is 0. So this would be y is equal to 3x plus 0, or simply y is equal to 3x. If we're going to make this a function, it's going to be f of x is equal to 3x. This is proportional because it goes through the origin. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take our two ordered pairs, 1, 8, 
and 2, 14. Y is equal to MX plus B. M equals B equals. M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. M equals 14 minus 8 over 2 minus 1. So M equals 6 over 1. So our slope is 6. Our y-intercept is 2, so it would be y is equal to 6x plus 2. So our function is going to be f of x is equal to 6x plus 2. This one is not proportional because it does not go through the origin. And there's our quiz review.